one of the most disgraceful failures in America's history. A chaotic exit from Afghanistan left America's image tarnished and led to the tragic death of 13 American soldiers. We are coming on the air because the flag draped remains of the 13 fallen U.S. service members who were killed on Thursday in Afghanistan have now arrived back in the United States to Dover Air Force Base in Delaware. And news reports have now confirmed Biden didn't act alone. Kamala Harris was part of the incompetence and failure that led to the unnecessary deaths of the young men and women tragically killed. Afghanistan. Yes. Were you the last person in the room? Yes. And you feel comfortable? I do. But the tragedy for the families of these 13 fallen Marines didn't end there. To this day, Biden and Harris have refused to even say the names of these fallen soldiers who gave their lives for their country. But they will never silence these Gold Star families. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the Gold Star families. Of our In the nearly three years since Hunter's been gone, there has been silence. Silence from that empty space at the dinner table where Hunter would have joined his brothers and sister and us for family gatherings. And there has been a deafening silence from the Biden and Harris administration. Despite our pleas for answers and accountability, they have pushed us away and tried to silence us. As commander in chief, President Trump always had his soldiers and their families backs and always will. I'm Christy Shamblin, my daughter-in-law, Sergeant Nicole Leanne G. Was a United States Marine and she was killed at Abbey Gate in Afghanistan alongside 12 of her brothers and sister in arms. Donald Trump spent six hours in Bedminster with us. He allowed us to grieve. He allowed us to remember our heroes. Donald Trump carried the weight for a few hours with me. And for the first time since Nicole's death, I felt I wasn't alone in my grief. Harris and Biden failed our soldiers and their families. President Trump never will. This month marks the three-year anniversary of the most embarrassing moment in the history of our country. Kamala and Crooked Joe's catastrophic withdrawal from Afghanistan has just been horrible for all of us. Three years ago, Kamala and Biden's incompetence left 13 dead warriors, hundreds of civilians killed and grievously wounded, and $85 billion worth of the finest military equipment on the planet abandoned to the Taliban, right into the hands of the Taliban. It also left 45 incredible soldiers so badly wounded, the legs, the arms, the face, obliteration. As Vice President, Kamala bragged that she was the last person in the room. She was the tough one. She was the last person in the room during that disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan decision. She repeatedly praised the decisions and she said it led to a catastrophe, but it was worth it. The incompetence and weakness on display from the Biden-Harris administration was an insult to every soldier, sailor, airman, and Marine who ever served in our U.S. military. As we mark this horrible occasion, we mourn with the families of the great American heroes who lost their lives three years ago, and we vow to never forget the supreme sacrifice they made for our country. America cannot afford four more years of Kamala Harris in the White House. She is a disaster. She's a 
radical Marxist. She destroyed San Francisco. She destroyed the state of California. Everything in her way she destroyed. She ran against crooked Joe Biden and she lost. She was the first one out of 22 people. She was the first one to quit. She never even in the primary made it to Iowa. And this is not a person that should be running right now. She didn't get one vote. I'm not a fan of Biden at all. I thought he was the worst president in history. I think she's the worst vice president in history. But she got no votes. He got 14 million votes. They staged a coup. And something like that's not supposed to happen in our country. Under my leadership, our nation will be strong and respected like never before. And I will keep America safe. I will keep it safer than ever before. And if I'm not elected, I truly believe you're going to end up in World War III and you're going to end up in a depression the likes of 1929. Thank you very much. And today I'm honored to officially welcome another true American patriot, a 17-year veteran of the Hawaii Army National Guard, a four-term Democrat congresswoman, very, very popular, the former vice chair of the National Democratic Party and a 2020 Democrat candidate for the United States presidency. You know, uh, she was uh, a very good candidate. Every time she ran, she was good. She did well. She decided to leave. She couldn't take it anymore, but she is uh, very special. And I didn't know this, but she was a lieutenant colonel. That's not bad. Lieutenant colonel. Not bad. I didn't know that. You know, I just found out. I said, put it down. You got to put that down. That's bigger. That's better than all the other stuff I read. But no, she's a special person. She's got great common sense, great spirit. She loves our country and she loves the people in this room. Tulsi Gabbard. Get Tulsi, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Aloha. I know we got Hawaii in the house here. There we go. <laughs> it is a privilege to be here with all of you, my brothers and sisters in uniform, especially on this day of all days. I had the privilege of joining President Trump this morning at Arlington Cemetery where he joined two Gold Star families and loved ones of Staff Sergeant Hoover and Sergeant G, both of whom were two of the 13 killed in the Abbey Gate attack three years ago today in Kabul. And I can tell you as we were there, as he laid a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier, joining these Marines' loved ones, I felt the sorrow that he shared with them in their loss. I felt and saw his sincere appreciation for these servicemen and women who paid the ultimate price and their loved ones who continue to grieve to this day. This is personal for me as I know it is for so many of you here. This is real. It's not just words. I first deployed to Iraq in 2005 with the Hawaii Army National Guard as a member of Charlie Med. As those of you who were deployed during that time know, it was the height of the war and sadly we took many casualties. And every day we were confronted with that high human cost of war and that sadness as we boarded the plane when we left that we were leaving some of our brothers and sisters behind only to lose others when we got home to suicide. So I mean what I say when I share with you that I know that President Trump understands the grave responsibility that a president and commander-in-chief bears for every single one of our lives. Whether you're a soldier, you're an airman, a marine, sailor, or a coastie, he keeps us in his heart in the decisions that he makes. We saw this through his first term in the presidency when he not only didn't start any new wars, he took action to de-escalate and prevent wars. 
He exercised the courage that we expect from our commander in chief in exhausting all measures of diplomacy, having the courage to meet with adversaries, dictators, allies, and partners alike in the pursuit of peace, seeing war as a last resort. The truth is, as we head towards our decision as a country in November, the same cannot be said about Kamala Harris. In fact, the opposite is true, and we're living through this reality today as this administration has us facing multiple wars on multiple fronts in regions around the world and closer to the brink of nuclear war than we ever have been before. This is one of the main reasons why I'm committed to doing all that I can to send President Trump back to the White House where he can once again serve us as our Commander-in-Chief. Because I am confident that his first task will be to do the work to walk us back from the brink of war. We cannot be prosperous unless we are at peace. And we can't live free as long as we have a government that is retaliating against its political opponents and undermining our civil liberties, weaponizing our, our very institutions against those they deem as a threat. Kamala Harris has done this over the last three and a half years. She won't hesitate to continue that if she is elected as president. President Trump has been their first and foremost target in this because they don't want us as voters to even have the option to vote for him. I've been their most recent target, added to a secret domestic terror watch list after exposing the truth about what kind of dangers we would face if Kamala Harris is elected as president. We as Americans must stand together to reject this anti-freedom culture of political retaliation and abuse of power. We can't allow our country to be destroyed by politicians who will put their own power ahead of the interests of the American people, our freedom, and our future. I am proud to stand here before you today, whether you're a Democrat, a Republican, or an Independent, if you love our country, as I do, if you cherish peace and freedom as we do, I invite you to join me in doing all that we can to save our country and elect President Donald J. Trump and send him back to the White House to do the tough work of saving our country and serving the people. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. President.